What is up YouTube, back in the garage. Um, working on the LS RX-8. Got my good friend Ben here. So last video we got the exhaust done. So I actually need to cross that out. Let's go. So fab exhaust is done. Crossing things off the list. Next on the list, as you guys know, is the wiring. So now that the exhaust is done, the only thing that's holding us back is the wiring uh, to keep this thing running. Um, there were some issues with the with the ignition 12 volt uh, being delayed whenever you turn it off. So I tried to turn off the key and it actually didn't turn off the engine right away. So I wanna get that fixed. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and wire in a full standalone fuse box. That way all of my injectors and coils are on their own fuses and I don't have to worry about, you know, wires getting lumped into the same fuse and possibly blowing them quicker. So um, that's what I'm doing today. And my good friend Ben is here. <laughs> from college we lived on the same floor same hall for all four, all four years of college so uh he is the electrical friend <laughs> <laughs> uh electrical engineering and computer right so yeah now you're doing it's cool probably. like satellite stuff radar and, yeah. radar close. stuff <laughs> yeah close enough we take those <laughs> so ben is officially a car guy now as of three, three weeks, weeks ago, ago yeah. um we replaced his rear struts in his car he came up here and pulled it in the garage we did rear struts and rear brakes so Ben is officially a car guy and uh, we traded hours. So I helped him work on his car and he's helped me wire up my car. So uh, the, the thumbnail title is a little clickbait. Um, I didn't actually need an electrical engineer, but I got one. So I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna though, he, he will. <laughs> so what Ben's working on on this side, uh, there's a ton of wires that need to get extended out through this uh, grommet here and they're gonna run up the driver's side. Um, the whole purpose of that, or the whole reason that needs to be done is because I relocated the fuse box and did the wire tuck. So um, they're gonna run up underneath the fender, similar to my passenger side here. Um, these are gonna run right up along this ledge here and you won't see anything in the bay, which is, which is the big thing. So we're gonna get those wires extended, finish up the passenger side, wire the fuse box. I'm gonna try to wire in my oil pressure sensor and my coolant temp sensor. Uh, the glow shift gauges. One thing I still need to do is get my Mazda coolant temp sensor plugged in. Uh, that I, I had an adapter, but it didn't quite work with my glow shift gauge and my uh, Mazda sensor. So um, right now I just have the glow shift gauge in because I think that's the most accurate to get this thing running. Then the last issue I'll have, I'm gonna get the fans wired up, but that runs off of the Mazda coolant temp sensor. So those are just some small issues off to work out later, but for now we're gonna get everything wired up. Um, I already have the coolant temp sensor for the Mazda sensor wired and the plug is ready to plug in once the sensor's in. So that'll be a quick fix later once I get an adapter that'll work. So we're gonna set up the time-lapse and get cranking. Ben is, he's already been cranking out the wire. So um, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep going and get this thing wired up. Uh, once I get to the fuse box, I will stop and explain in case anybody cares about how to do that. So enjoy it. All right guys, so I'm gonna go over the fuse box uh, logic that I'm using. So um, basically this battery post is the post that's gonna be mounted up in the front uh, that comes straight from the battery. So that's a positive terminal. Um, this is the fuse box. This is my fuse box here. Um, it came with four relays, but I'm just using one of them because I am using the fan relays for the Mazda and the fuel pump relay for the Mazda. So all I need is this relay specifically for the fuse box. Um, and then here's uh, the engine and, and the points on the engine ECU that I need to plug in here. So if I start with the fuse box and I start with the relay, 
Um, basically what we're gonna have here are all of these fuse terminals are all linked together. So I'm gonna link one of those terminals to the output of the relay, which would be these two here tied together. So here's the one terminal and here's the output of the relay. Um, then you're gonna have your ground and you're gonna have your positive battery terminal that's gonna come straight from the battery post with an inline fuse. And then I'm gonna have my ignition switch going into the 86 pole of the relay. So I found an ignition source. Um, it's actually a black and yellow wire. It's one of the wires going into the big white plug uh, for the engine harness on the Mazda. I'm not using the other side of that plug. So I basically found one of those that supplies 12 volts on ignition and I'm using that to trigger the relay. I think any of those wires that supplies 12 volts on ignition uh, would work just fine. So from there, triggers the relay, it supplies us 12 volts to this row here. And then basically from there, I'm gonna have wires coming out, these wires here, and I'm gonna be able to put my different size fuses, whatever I need, and run those to um, my O2 sensors, MAF, injectors, coils, uh, my the ignition source on the ECU, which I actually forgot to draw here. Um, and then I also have, I'm gonna have a Y off of that constant 12 volt, and that's gonna come over here um, and supply constant 12 volts to the engine ECU. So doing this will keep the LS engine completely separate and on, the, on its own fuses um, than the Mazda. I will be using the ignition 12 volt from the Mazda harness. So um, I still will be tapping into that, but it's pretty much just one wire. So, um, the overall it's still I'd consider a standalone harness and I'm just getting um, an ignition source from the chassis. Ben's finishing up the passenger side over here. So I had done these a while ago and there were just a few more plugs to extend out. So he's finishing that up. And then once he's done in there, I'll be able to wire in the fuse box and get it all hooked up. And once the fuse box is running, you know, then it's just odds and ends to finish this thing up. I could technically start it up once the once the fuse box is in. So, um, but we're gonna try to finish it all up tonight. I'm hoping to get everything wrapped up too. So um, everything will be sealed up and protected. I have some loom and just some tape and whatever we use. So the goal is to get this thing on the ground tomorrow. So I'd like it to be wired up for that. All right, guys, got the fuse box hooked up, um, tested some voltages with Matt's help, and we're gonna start this thing up to make sure that everything is still getting voltage where it needs to and still runs right. Huh. <laughs> All right, let me know when. I'm gonna turn it. See if I did it right. <laughs> Thank you.
What is up YouTube, back in the garage. I didn't wanna let this video get too long, so I went ahead and finished all the wiring, uh, at least what I wanna get done at this stage off camera. So uh, the video was gonna start getting really long if I filmed everything. So I'm gonna just go over everything real quick. What I did, I'm thinking tomorrow this thing is gonna be outside. I'd like to even get it down on the ground tonight. So uh, that'll possibly be the next video. So look out for that. But for now, here's what I got done with the electrical. So I finished up this driver's side uh, loom. I'm gonna probably wrap the whole thing in tape to try to seal it up as best as possible since it's gonna probably get some water up here in the wheel well. Uh, but for now, until I make sure I don't have any issues, I'm gonna just leave it kind of partially taped. Got my ABS plug up here. All like 40 wires were extended. Um, kind of wraps around there and back up. It should dodge any anything in here and I'm gonna make a nice little cover plate in there to cover up uh, the brake lines and the ABS module and whatnot. Uh, so this side's done. I checked all my headlights work and blinkers work, so that's good uh, Good news. Passenger side was already done beforehand. A little bit smaller loom on that side. I got my brake master cylinder plug extended. I got my Mazda coolant temp sensor in there, so that's coming from this side. Also, by the way, I got a new PCV valve. Mine was all torn up and definitely not sealing, so I think I had a huge vacuum leak there. Uh, so this one should work a lot better. So inside of the car, you can see I got all my wires coming up from my fuse box area to they come up underneath. They're going to be underneath the dash here. They come across. Um, I already wired up my glow ship gauges because I want to start this thing and be able to see what my coolant temp is. That way I can bleed it and also just make sure my oil pressure is good. So I went ahead and wired that all up. You can see the wires coming out of there. And here's the, I'd say the biggest mess on the driver's side i think i can cover most of this up with the, the stock panels i might have to do some trimming and you know tuck some of that back but for the most part everything's uh gonna be able to tuck in there pretty well and uh, all my pedals are gonna be just fine down there so here's where my oil pressure gauge and coolant temp sensor uh, wires run again probably gonna tape this whole thing up to seal it for the most part this thing is uh good to go as you saw earlier i did start it with my new fuse box and it all shut off fine and ran fine. Whereas before, because I was on some weird Mazda relays, uh, they didn't shut off right away. So that's all fixed now. Fuse box seems to be working just fine. The one last electrical thing I need to do, which I haven't done, I have this breaker, uh, which is gonna be right right at my battery. And that's gonna be, um, you know, just in case there's any huge short with my, with my battery wire running up to the front. So, um, I didn't get a chance to do that yet, but that, that'll be easily accessible later. So anyways, like I said, I didn't want to let this video get too long. I've already had like three wiring videos, so there's no reason to um, just keep, you know, showing everything and everything about it. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to answer it um, if I can remember what I did. So thank you guys for watching. Like I said, this thing is going to be on the ground in the next video. So I'm super excited for that. Um, and hopefully maybe moving under its own power, uh, which is gonna be very cool but i'm also very nervous so um wish me luck and like comment subscribe and have a good night